And now with Eddie Matz from ESPN.com, covers the Orioles on a regular basis. And Eddie, let's talk a little about the Orioles' chances right now. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, let me, I got my magic eight ball here, so let me <laughs> hold on. Get my magic eight ball. <laughs> it says, reply hazy. Try again. Hold on. <laughs> says signs point to yes. That's what the Magic 8-Ball says. I always trust the Magic 8-Ball. I mean, look, right now, obviously, they're in position to get the playoff spot. Uh, so assuming things don't change, that's going to hold true. And that's what, if you look at fan grass and you look at baseball prospectus, they project the playoff odds. Right now, they've got them slightly above 50% to make the playoffs. It's not great. It's not as good as it was a couple days ago. But it's still second best out of the non-division winning, non-division leading teams. Uh, Detroit's at about 32%. So, you know, that kind of reflects the fact that if you look at Detroit's schedule, it is brutal. They play uh, Kansas City, who they're 6-10 and 10 against. They play Cleveland, who they're 2-13 and 13 against. So, you know, maybe the law of averages uh, works in their favor and they can win a few games. But that's a, a tough, tough couple matchups for them compared to what the Orioles have, which is uh, Toronto, New York, and Arizona. So, you know, New York uh, and Toronto have done okay against the Orioles, but not like uh, the Royals and the Indians have done against the Tigers. Of course, you've got the Astros, the Mariners. They're all in the mix. Uh, I think the key is that for the Orioles, they need to turn the offense around. They, since the All-Star break, they're averaging, what is it, 4.1 runs a game. That's 13th in the American League. Not good. Uh, and then over the last 10 games, it's been even worse. They're down to 3.1 runs a game. This is not the offense that I think Orioles fans expected to see. I think when it first started happening, the second half of the season, people thought it was an aberration. But now the sample size is large enough that you're thinking, where is the offense? Obviously, Mark Trumbo's struggles are a huge part of that. So I think if, if Trumbo can get things turned around and some of the other guys can get going, it's going to help them uh, in a big way as they push for a playoff spot. From hitting to pitching, how about Dylan Bundy? Does he get another start the rest uh, of the way? That is the million-dollar question. You know, when Bundy first got thrown into the rotation after the All-Star break, he was fantastic. Uh, through, through August 12th, which was his first six starts, uh, which was 70 innings, by the way, which is that magic number that the Orioles have been throwing out there as far as that's how long he could pitch, 2.93 ERA. Since then, 6.68 ERA. The walks are way up. The velocity's a little bit down. So, you know, after his start the other night, Buck was asked about it. Bundy was asked about it. And Bundy said he feels great. He said his arm feels fine. However, you just have to wonder. I mean, he's already 30 innings past that 70-inning mark. He hasn't pitched that much in about four years. He's been banged up. He's been injury prone. So you have to wonder at this point, it's a risk reward thing. Obviously, the Orioles want to get into the postseason. They'd love to go all the way. But at what cost? Dylan Bundy is a former first round pick. He's a prized possession of theirs. So you have to wonder if they're either going to send him back to the bullpen or maybe even just shut him down. It was interesting before the game today, uh, Buck was asked about the starting rotation against Arizona. He said it's going to be Gallardo on Friday and Miley on Saturday and then someone asked why is Miley starting again because we all know he hasn't really been getting the job done and uh, Buck's words were what did Buck say uh, he said something about uh, Miley feels fine so that's why we're starting <laughs> him and we've got some other factors involved that will emerge as we go forward so who knows what that means you know maybe Miley's not 100 percent Tillman just came off the DL so we don't know what's going on with him even if Bundy does feel fine and is not hurt, he just may be tired. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The fact that Gallardo and Miley are starting against Arizona indicates that maybe there's there's something in the offing there. Uh, Eddie writes on a regular basis for ESPN.com. How about uh, Caleb Joseph? You did a column about him recently. Tell us a little bit about how he's taking the no RBIs for the yeah. season. So. God bless Caleb Joseph. I love that guy. Everybody loves Caleb. He's, he's very popular in the, in the clubhouse. And one of the big reasons why is because he has a fantastic sense of humor, right? Like if you could get into the Hall of Fame just based on sense of humor, yeah. he'd be first ballot all the way. You know, he, uh, he's a, a, a notorious impersonator. He can do a dead on buck. He does the coaches all the time. He's fantastic. When he came back from that injury earlier this year, he had the Kevlar Cup. He said, if it's good enough for a bullet, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so he definitely has a sense of humor. And I asked him about that streak. And he goes, this is funny. I was talking to him. And as I'm talking to him, Ryan Flaherty happens to pass by. He goes, it's all Ryan Flaherty's fault because he never gets on base. <laughs> so, so clearly, he, he has a sense of humor about it. What's interesting about Flaherty is, although Flaherty is not the highest on base guy, uh, one of the two times that Joseph came up this year with runners in scoring position where he actually got a hit, 
was Flaherty. That was back in May. The other time was Chris Davis. Each time those guys were standing on second base, they didn't score. So you've got a guy named Flash who didn't score. <laughs> you've got Chris Davis, who statistically is the Orioles' best base runner, according to fan graphs. He didn't score. And then you've got that one that I'm sure you remember and all the viewers out there remember where he hit that uh, a couple weeks ago, a line drive to center field over right. Kiermaier's head. Right. And, of course, it's a platinum glove winner yeah. playing in center field. That looks like a sure extra base mm -hmm. hit, sure RBI. Doesn't happen. So I was talking to Davis about it because last year Davis was the only guy on the team who was more productive on a per-at-bat basis with RBIs than Joseph. And he said, you know what? You play the game long enough, these things are going to happen. It's just one of those years where things aren't falling his way. So when those things happen, there's not much you can do about it. So the question is, how many more starts will he get? Maybe one or two, probably. It's interesting. Will he break the schneid? If he doesn't break the schneid, he'll be the first player since RBIs became an official stat in 1920 to have at least 100 at-bats in a season with a goose egg in the RBI column. But as long as they win, he doesn't care. He's, <laughs> he's great about it.